Okay, I'm looking at this script, and current me is about to lose their damn voice with how long it is. So let's shred my throat, okay? Okay. Firstly, quick fire ratings for the two new primaries. The Comorex, a status sniper rifle that- HOLY GOD DAMN IT'S HUGE! Uh, this thing is almost as big as my frame. Uh, so I don't know how I feel about it function-wise, but at least it's unique. 6 out of 10. The Fallman. Zippity zappity shit falls over. Good stats, unique weapon, and has what can only be described as a monster energy can at the end of it. So yeah, pretty close to perfection. So 8 out of 10. Okay, cool. Next, a repeat of the disclaimer from the primaries video. Because some seem to have missed the point of these ratings. Anyways, I am not rating these weapons based on how destructively ass-blasting they are. This isn't meant to tell you, hey, this thing is the biggest dickest of number generators. Pick it, you fucking asshole! In fact, let me show you something. You're looking at all of my weapon usage for secondaries, and you might notice that I've only really touched about half of the available weapons if we include primes that I've missed or bases that I've missed. So how can I, someone who has not even played with every weapon, make a video where I rate all of them? Because I'm not rating them with a stat meta in mind. I'm rating them primarily for their uniqueness, with stats being a supplement to their ratings. And weapons can have the same rating for completely different reasons. For example, the Mutalist Quanta and the Soma both got 7 out of 10s. The Mutalist Quanta got its 7 for its unique ability to shoot crit-boosting beach balls. Now, the Soma was carried to its 7 because while it's not super unique, it did have some great stats but it didn't go any higher than 7 because of how box standard it is. It, it's literally just a bullet hose. It might outdamage the Mutalist Quanta, but under this criteria, that doesn't give it a better score. So, we clear? Groovy. Let's begin. The Azima. While not as good as the wall hack that is Zenith.exe, the Azima has grown on me, what with its niche for deploying bullet sprinklers. Though its performance is... Poo. I always felt like expending your entire magazine for a Beyblade disc that does just about as much damage as throwing an actual toy Beyblade at an enemy was kind of unfair to the Azima. Give it a buff, and it'd probably become a favorite of mine. 6 out of 10. The Sustra. Now, I don't use this thing myself, but the idea of using what is essentially a handheld minigun given its spin-up time, that is how you get me to have some giggles. Some would consider the spool-up to be a negative. I consider it a crescendo to bullet hell. Sadly, it has the same issue with the Azima, where its performance isn't too hot, but it has Riven Despacito to make up for it. It also lacks a truly unique mechanic, but I'm not gonna put it any lower than 5 out of 10. The Furus. This thing would just be a bog standard bullet hose secondary that would regulate it to probably around 2 to 3 out of 10 if it wasn't for Wings of Purity, thus making it the only gun in the game besides the Hema that has lifesteal built into it. Pretty freaking nice, especially given its Riven Blips. Though it still does have some pretty poopy stats, at least until its prime becomes a thing. Eh, 6 out of 10. The Hystrix. I really, really like this one. It's like all the damage potential from Chroma's 1 and his 4 jumped into a weapon and fucked off. Not only is it unique, but it sports a solid crit chance and even above average crit multiplier. Though I don't know why a gun all about elemental switching only has... 10% status. I mean, I know it has guaranteed procs of its elemental pick, but it's still a bit weird, that. 9 out of 10. The Nell. Okay, so the weapon itself is great. I like its function, and I like how it makes gunplay quite a bit more interactive, but I will never forgive DE for giving this auto fire upon landing a headshot, but not the dual toxicist. Macro fire button out of 10. The Stubba. I like this weapon more at launch than I do now. At the time of launch, it was kind of hard to find a single handed good auto pistol besides the Stubba. Most everything else had poop stats or were dual wield only. So at the time, it was nice for that niche, but I mean, <laughs> kit guns. 4 out of 10. The Viper. Remember how I said that I would have given the Furus a 2 to 3 out of 10 if it weren't for its augments? Yeah, uh, the poor Viper doesn't have such luck for me. 2 out of 10. 
The Acerid, dude. Acrid, whatever. Wow. Wow, what a blast from the past this thing is. Believe it or not, youngins, this thing used to be the king of secondaries. It was what kit guns are right now. But nowadays, it just kind of sits in its rocking chair screaming at the newer generation. Looks cool, though, and it was amazing for its time. So I'll be generous and I'll give it a 4 out of 10. The Arca Cisco. Honestly, just a really neat sidearm. It's a standard sort of semi-auto, but its target analysis buff is just a really nice gimmick, making it stand out a bit more. Also, stat-wise, it's no slouch either when the buff is built up to its maximum. Also, two innate V polarities. <laughs> Been a while since I've seen that. 8 out of 10. The Bolto. I don't know why, but I was never really as attached to the Bolto as much as I was the Boltor. And I really like the Boltor. Uh, hard for me to talk about this one. Uh, 3 out of 10. The Lado. Babby's first sidearm. But what's interesting about the Lado is that it has been kept pretty freaking decent over the years. Seriously, the Vandal's 26% crit and 2.4 multiplier is nothing to laugh at. And if you have the Prime, then that's just veteran crit and 30% crit. Surprisingly, this is still a decent weapon. 6 out of 10. The Lex. Okay, so I know that this is the most basic sidearm you can get sans the Lado, but I don't know, man. I just have a soft spot for it. I think this was my first made secondary, and it hit like a truck at the time. And its stats are still pretty good. So, 6 out of 10. The Magnus. This is one of those secondaries I don't think I've put any time into. So, I don't really have much to say about this one. I was always more of a Vasto guy anyways. 5 out of 10. The Merlock. I remember getting this thing for one reason. That lever. Seriously, seeing that animation, I feel makes the weapon way better. Also, its stats are still pretty okay. Uh, that 1.5 times multiplier hurts though. 7 out of 10. The Plinks. Even this thing's name sounds puny. It's funny because on paper, it looks pretty damn solid. Seriously, it has 32% base crit and a 3.0 times multiplier. Just two problems. It has kind of mediocre base damage, so its crit and multi can't shine as well as, say, a Nels, and it has zero slash. Yeah, that, <laughs> that's an ow. Uh, 4 out of 10. The Seer. I think I've used this? Honestly, I can't remember. Anyways, Babby's first crap gun. Unfortunately, it hasn't held up as well as some of the other early weaponry. Perfectly balanced IPS though, as all things should be. Angry Raisin Man out of 10. The Sonicor. <sighs> this poor thing had a roller coaster of a life. It was everyone's favorite Tenno Space program platform, which was then nerfed so that it couldn't team rocket people anymore. And then said nerf was reverted because DE realized that it was the only reason anyone used the weapon. And then the nerf was put back in. So now it's just kind of sitting in everyone's inventory coffins. Four out of ten. That hurt to say. The Tysis. I feel like this thing tried to fill the niche of being a corrosive throwing weapon, but practically everything can be built to throw corrosive. But hey, it's pretty freaking cool looking, it shoots a corrosive dart, and at least it has slash planks! Plus five out of five ribbon disposition. Five out of ten. The Vasto. Six bullets. More than enough to kill anything that moves. The Zacti. The sidearm of choice for those who always want to have melee finishers available to them, but are sick of playing things like a Naros and Excalibur. A niche weapon with some mediocre stats, but hey, it does its niche well. 7 out of 10. The Kraken. Another weapon that I've not used, and from the looks of it, I'm probably not missing much. 3 out of 10. The Sycorus. If there was ever a weapon with a hero's journey type tale, it's the Sycorus. There was a time where people despised seeing this thing, both its base and its prime parts. It was the equivalent of seeing another Fang prime part in your relics. But then through buffs, it became a pretty damn solid sidearm. Plus, it's one of the few worthwhile burst sidearms if that's what you like. 7 out of 10. The Zylock. Uh, this thing never really clicked for me, and it's sad too because of the time I spent on the event that was needed to obtain it. Uh, 5 out of 10? The Atomos. Splooge Cannon! Never really used this weapon much either, but I have heard good things about it though. And it looks like a damn pufferfish. So, if only by novelty alone, 6 out of 10. The Cycron. On the opposite end of the spectrum, Spectrum, I've heard arse things about this, but honestly, at least I think it looks pretty neato. So, Tron out of 10. The Embolist. Okay, bias time. I've really gotta make that clear, because I got a ribbon for this thing that turns it into a can of 
pepper spray that demolishes armor and for a time it had like 200% status before D capped status at 100. I burning goodness out of 10. The Gamma Core. Man I remember loving this thing. I love how it circles around your wrist and you just fire a freaking beam from it. It's so cool. Style wise it's one of the best weapons in the game. Performance wise uh it's only form of base damage is magnetic. And yeah I think that's all I have to say. Also, why is this Riven Despacito so ass? 5 out of 10. The new core. Look, let's cut the bullshit. I know the number one reason you use this is because it has peculiar growth built into it before peculiar growth was even a thing. That alone, and the fact that the new core isn't just another laser beam gun, puts this thing at the top of secondaries for me. Plus, that 4 times crit multiplier might look unviable with just 3% crit, but you got some ways to make it work. 10 out of 10. The Ocu Core. Neat little weapon with the whole tendril spawning mechanic, but its whole lose tendrils on reload penalty makes it feel more like a tech demo for the synth mod set or a jacked mag. And I don't know, that just felt wrong to me. Then again, tendrils making you feel wrong isn't anything new. Gelbaru out of 10. The Spectra. I never used this until I got the Vandal. <laughs> I don't know, it's just kind of a standard beam weapon. I'm not really opposed to it or anything, but yeah. Beam, 6 out of 10. The Ballistica, a good weapon and all, but can we please have the phantoms that spawn from its prime variant actually do something? But I do mean the first bit. I love the feel of this thing. And at least its prime does more than just throw more stats at it. But yeah, those specters need a serious boost. 8 out of 10. The Cyanex. Besides the name sounding like a flu medication, this thing is pretty neato. It does have some common gripes of mine, such as having no slash, but the damn thing lets you bounce bullets off of walls. Unfortunately, it's not a revolver. So I thereby give it the rating, sad also lot out of 10. The Pandero. I love to reload during a battle. The Brack. I'd rather use the Pyrona Prime out of 10. The Bronco. I'd rather use the Ack Bronco out of 10. The Detron. Oh, 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 oh the Mar Detron is so fun. Seriously, see that status? That means 100% status potential. 100% status on a shotgun equals every pellet triggers a proc. Throw corrosive on this and oh, things don't have a good time. God, I love this damn thing. 9 out of 10. The Euphona Prime. The shotgun mode of this thing loses its max damage after 6 meters, and it can lose over 98% of its damage at just 12 meters. The Brack has better fall off than that. I know you have your slug mode and everything, but yikes! But it looks cool as hell. 6 out of 10. The Comb Mac. I mentioned in the first video how, while I've never used the comb, I respect it for trying to be unique. Well, call me a broken record, because the same thing is happening again now. 6 out of 10. The Pyrana. Bias mode is fully engaged. The Pyrana Prime is probably my favorite non-kit gun secondary. The buff effect it gets is just way too much fun, it looks great, and the stats it has are goddamn solid. When you give me some that looks nice, has a unique performance, and backs that performance up with numbers, that is a 10 out of 10 in my book. The Angstrom. Haha. <laughs> Self damage. Other than that, killing a huge reason for me to use this thing, I mean, it's a pocket rocket shotgun. And that's pretty fucking neato. Also, I can't help but see this as that one item in Smash Brothers that shoots mini torpedoes. Yeah, that's what this is. 5 out of 10. The Coal Star. I used to like this thing a lot with Limbo's old stasis, but now it just kind of sits in my inventory. Also, haha, self damage. 3 out of 10. The Stug. Why do I hear a pink Grenier last screaming? Well, whatever. The Stug is an odd case. It's actually a super, super unique weapon. Seriously, functionality-wise, it's pretty damn neat. But of all the weapons we'll be rating, the Stug is the only one where its actual number game is so shite that no matter how neat it might be, it is not worth trying to use. Also, they gave it self-damage because I guess they wanted to have another piss at our expense. Gee, thanks for that, DE. 3 out of 10. 
Okay, we need to kick up the pace, so I'm going to rapid fire through all of the dual weapons that we've already seen in their single form. Ready? And go. The Afuris. Can't use Wings of Purity, immediately making it worse, 3 out of 10. The Dual Zestra. Twin mini minigun pistols. Again, poop stats, but nice design. 5 out of 10. The Twin Gracatas. Meme weapon, but with actually great stats. Where's Twin Prisma Gracatas D, you cowards? 8 out of 10. The Twin Vipers. Having two stable guns doesn't make me feel any better. 2 out of 10. The Akbolto. Now that Prime is what I'm talking about. 8 out of 10. The Aklato. No variants, no fun. 2 out of 10. The Aklex. See the likes rating, but just listen to it twice, I guess. The Ak Magnus. 12 shots. The Ak Vasto. This time I've got 12 shots. The Ak Bronco. If the Bronco just had a better looking model, it'd probably be one of my favorites. 6 out of 10. The Twin Comac. How many Comac type weapons are there? Okay, on to the dual exclusive secondaries. The Axomati. You took the Soma and split it in two. I guess if you're part of the Soma fan club with your Soma body pillow and Soma Season 19 Blu-ray, this might be worth adding to the collection. Though, I'll admit, I'm excited to see what the Axomati Prime brings. Dare they add more crit? We may never know. Uh, 6 out of 10. The Axtiletto. Most likely the secondary used by Bayonetta. Of all the dual machine pistols, the Axtiletto Prime is probably my favorite, and uh, it looks nice. I don't know, it's just kind of a nice bullet hose. 7 out of 10. The Axani. Okay, I cannot see a reason why these things exist. I quite often forget about them because the twin gremlins in Axtiletto existed before it, and then later the Axamati came along. We got like four of the same style of machine pistols, and this is just the weakest of the bunch. 3 out of 10. The Twin Gremlins. It got a Prisma so that immediately saves it from my shit cannon. Other than that, not much else to say. Like I said, machine pistols. I think we have enough of these now, so Gremlins 3 out of 10. The Dual Toxicist. I love these things, but their ride has been bumpy. They previously got their buff duration nerfed drastically, but you know what still makes me want to bring a cheese grater to my balls? I mentioned it earlier in this video, no auto fire on headshots. That's not even the weapon's fault either. This is entirely down to DE, so I'm not taking points off for it. The thing looks neat, it has a cool function, and it's even pretty strong. 8 out of 10. The Axtragara. These things are just begging you to throw them into the eyes of a corpus or something. I've always looked at these like you took the Redeemer, but then just removed the whole melee part of it. And it's like, cool, but now what do with the giant pieces of sharpened metal that's on them? Shove them up my ass, I guess. 6 out of 10. The Twin Roga. We got some chunk based damage, boys. Also sporting 33% status, and guess what? It's a shotgun, so that means nothing is allowed to live. The Twin Roga just feel nice to use, despite being quite a simple weapon in terms of function. So much so that I'm willing to look past the weird ass veins that are all over the damn things. 7 out of 10. The Staticor. To this day, this remains one of the most interesting and coolest sidearms in the game. If you want to experience a good time, you will stick these Duracell batteries on your hand and go around flinging corner of burning visual effects. It's scary though, because these just might go down the path of the Sonicor. They were very, very briefly given self damage applied to them, but through the power of logic, DE backed down and reverted it for now. So keep your burnt eyes peeled, boys. We don't want them trying something like that again. Visual bliss out of 10. The Kastanas. <laughs> oh god, I specifically remember using these for Trinity Link DPS before that was eventually eliminated from the game, and I've not touched these things since. Mind you, they're pretty okay. Nifty function, good stats, but also self damage, which is an immediate turnoff. 6 out of 10. The Talons. Exact same thoughts as the Kastanas, only this time it's boom boom instead of zippy zappy. 6 out of 10. The Despair. Wow, I remember when these were also the king of secondaries. Everyone was using a Despair if they could get them to drop. Nowadays, it's more of just a middle of the road option for throwing knives, but the journeys that were had to get these were still worth it. 6 out of 10. The Fusilli. There's one thing that separates true weebs from fake weebs. Being able to throw multiple shurikens with one throw and only being able to throw one with one throw. The fuselage falls into the former category. So get fucked, kunai! 7 out of 10. The Haiku. For this, I should just read you a Haiku that I wrote. <clears throat> Chromas wield their stars, throwing them towards the floor. EXPLOSION! Owl toes. The kunai! <laughs> uh, 
At least it has five ribbon, Despacito. One out of ten. The Pox. I love these things already before because throwing armor shredding testicles around was already a good time. But now you can also give them that one tarot card skin and throw exploding cards everywhere. The style alone grants this thing a nine out of ten. The Spira! Going from a standard sort of throwing knife to a goddamn drill dart for your prime is a pretty major jump in aesthetics and design, but I'm not complaining. Gurren Lagan out of 10. Lastly, kit guns. Just gonna be doing the chambers because, let's face it, I know about two thirds of you have haymaker, splat, catch moons, or tomb fingers. So let's cut the fat. The catch moon. Could just call this thing the Archiplazlet. Easy moto for kit guns, but that is not taking points off. Amazing performance, and things like Pax Bolt and Pax Seeker make it power creep to fuck. And uh, this applies to pretty much any kit gun. In fact, no kit gun is gonna be below 8 out of 10. Spoilers. For the Catch Moon, a 9 out of 10. The Tomb Finger, a little bit harder to use than something like a Catch Moon, though I do think it gives you bigger rewards. It has access to Slash, for example, it actually has headshot multipliers unlike the Catch Moon, and it has radiation for an innate damage type. Radiation is great for just raw damage dealing against things like Grenier, and I'm willing to bet that most people have Crit Fingers. So, Finger Blasting and Sues. 9 out of 10. The Gaze. So with the Gaze and the Rattle Guts, I actually don't have any experience with them, but I mean they're kit guns. They have the Arcane, so that alone probably makes a properly built Gaze kit gun the absolute best beam secondary you can have. Now is it as unique as something like a new core? Well, no, but again. Arcanes. 8 out of 10. The Rattle Guts. Exact same thoughts as the Gaze. Rattle Guts are probably the single best one handed auto pistol you can make, and at this point, I'm just being a broken record. So, 8 2 Electric Boogaloo out of 10. Whew, I am done finally. Editing these takes a really long ass time, so, uh, sorry to future me for putting all this editing work on you. Except nah, fuck you, it's not past me's problem anymore. <laughs> now as for melees, oh, there's so many of them. Oh, errors have been made.